Hello, uh, my name is Margarita Fursova. I am a researcher of WordDoc, Water Resources Research and Documentation Center of uh, the University for Foreigners of Perugia, based in Italy, uh, which is one of the partners of Carisma Project. Today, I will introduce you the European Green Deal agenda and uh, how it relates to the topic of cultural heritage and its protection. In particular, in this lesson, I will present you the European Green Deal policy areas, which are of particular relevance for the professionals from the cultural heritage sector, in particular those related to climate action, biodiversity protection, building and renovation, and the new European Bauhaus initiative. Uh, let's start with the introduction of the European Green Deal and its objectives. The European Green Deal can be defined as the current European Union agenda for sustainable development, green transition and uh, climate action. Its main objectives, which you can see on the slide, are three. Protection of nature, citizens' health and well-being, as well as climate neutrality of Europe by 2050. It is important uh, to note uh, that the European climate neutrality ambition is the core among the objectives that I mentioned. Uh, in general, the European Green Deal expresses the need to dissociate economic growth with the unsustainable use of natural resources and environmental damages. It contains mid-term and long-term policy commitments, some of which were translated into legally binding targets, as in case of the European climate law. The European Green Deal adopts integrated approach in order to address environmental and climate challenges in their complexity and to consider the interconnections among different sectors. As you can see on this slide, there are different policy areas and related documents within the European Green Deal, and all of them are interlinked. The policies concern uh, such issues as climate change mitigation and adaptation, circular economy, biodiversity protection, clean energy, resource efficient building and renovating, zero pollution goal, sustainable mobility, as well as agriculture and food systems. Now uh, let's explore how can all these issues uh, that I mentioned be related to, to the cultural heritage sector. The three policies we have just seen uh, have uh, direct uh, relevance to the cultural heritage sector. Uh, these are climate action, biodiversity protection and restoration, and building and renovation policies. The first policy area as it is important uh, for heritage professionals relates to climate change mitigation and uh, adaptation. As you probably know, evidence that uh, cultural heritage is threatened by climate change is growing both globally and in Europe. And the European Green Deal, of course, um, recognizes climate driving risks to heritage. The, the potential impacts of climate change uh, are associated mainly with so-called climate extremes, which are increasing in their severity and frequency. Uh, Venice and its lagoon is one of the most um, iconic examples of the heritage sites at risk by climate change. And for this reason, it was included in the seven most endangered uh, her heritage sites program of Europa Nostra in uh, 2016. The Charisma project uh, has a particular focus on climate risks to cultural heritage. And in this course, uh, you will have uh, the opportunity to learn more about this issue in other lessons. Uh, coming back to policies uh, with regard to, to climate action policies, there are two documents, the European Climate Pact and the European Strategy on Adaptation to Climate Change, that address um, 
cultural heritage in uh, their text. The European Climate Pact uh, in particular notes the importance uh, of uh, public awareness raising activities on direct and indirect impacts or of uh, climate change uh, on heritage. In its term, the European Union strategy on adaptation to climate change emphasizes the cultural benefits of uh, adaptation solutions, in particular nature-based solutions. For you, as a risk managers, nature-based solutions uh, for disaster risk reduction may be of particular interest. Uh, here on this slide, uh, you can see the link to the website of one of the platforms with a lot of useful information of uh, about uh, nature-based solutions. Uh, and uh, I advise you to have a look at uh, this website. The second policy area on building and renovation, in particular the renovation wave strategy, address uh, topics such as the need to, to protect and respect for cultural uh, values of heritage sites during the renovation process and the need for, uh, for skilled professionals uh, capable of handling this task. There is also the new European Bauhaus initiative uh, that aims at uh, creating and promoting sustainable design and beautiful and inclusive places, products and ways of living. The initiative uh, established uh, so-called NEBLAB and NEP community uh, that uh, different types of organizations, both commercial and non-profit, can join. Uh, the website of the initiative uh, uh, also contains a database of inspiring projects and ideas and uh, publishes information on uh, different funding opportunities on the NEP related topics. For this reason, uh, this is also a source that could be uh, useful for heritage professionals. Finally, uh, there are policies on protection and restoration of ecosystems and biodiversity uh, that uh, heritage professionals need to keep in mind. Uh, in particular, the European Union forest strategy recognizes the role of forest uh, as a hub for cultural heritage and calls for collaboration and uh, the creation of um, alliances between heritage professionals and uh, uh, specialists from tourism and forestry sectors. Another strategy, the Blue Economy Strategy, in turn among it, its goals aims at the promotion of ecotourism in order to develop uh, coastal regions by showcasing maritime heritage. Now uh, we are right almost to the end of this lesson and I would like to note uh, that overall the enhanced environmental and climate policies within the European Green Deal are of great importance for cultural heritage preservation, in particular uh, from the climate change impacts. At the same time, both uh, cultural and heritage professionals should uh, collaborate together and remember that cultural heritage itself can provide uh, solutions to climate and uh, environmental challenges we are facing. To conclude, I would like to cite the European uh, Heritage Green Paper published by Europa Nostra and ECOMOS in 2021, which called for better integration of the cultural heritage topic in the European Green Deal strategy and all its policies. The report notes that cultural heritage offers immense and virtually untapped potential to support just transition to the low carbon, climate resilient futures envisioned by the European Green Deal. 
um, I kindly invite you to read uh, this report uh, because it contains a lot of useful information for heritage professionals and uh, additional insights on interlinkages between cultural heritage, climate and environmental policies. Thank you for your attention and see you in other videos. Bye.